Okay, in this video we're going to talk about some more adjustments and tweaks that you can do with layers to take your work and your effect on your photos even further. And we were just talking about how to kind of navigate through the layers and sort them and group them and things in the last lecture. Now we're going to talk about these things right up here. So I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this little image just by grabbing, dragging, deleting it. We'll get rid of one of these black and white adjustment layers. Delete it. Okay, so now we just have a hue and saturation layer, warming it up. And then we have a black and white layer, which is making our whole image black and white. And actually, let me ungroup these two. So I'm just going to right click and say ungroup layers. Okay, now we're back to simplicity. So if I click on my black and white layer, I have my properties panel here. And then I have these different little drop downs and things. And let me tell you about what some of them do. This first one here is your blending modes. And we'll talk more about blending modes in another lecture because blending modes can be really cool. But essentially what you need to know is this blending mode tells you how this layer is going to relate to the layers beneath it. Okay? So when you're on normal, it's going to basically do kind of the default of what this layer is supposed to do, which is turn it black and white. And it's doing a great job. But if I click on this drop down and I go hover over these other blending modes, it's going to change the way this black and white layer interacts. And so like dissolve doesn't do much, but if I go to darken, you'll see that now it's darkening the layer underneath it. If I go to multiply, you'll see that both layers are doing their job. So the black and white one is making it black and white and the color one is making it color and they really interact. You'll use this one a lot for a lot of different reasons, but you can just scroll through these and kind of see the effects that they have. And like I say, we'll go into these in more detail, but I just wanted to show you what happens here when you use these various things. But it's just affecting the way that they interact with each other. And see in some of these, like some of these create actually a kind of favorable effect. Overlay is kind of a high contrast, uh, intense look. Soft light is kind of nice. And you can just see kind of the different effects that these blending modes have. Some of them are a little much and you'll probably never use them. <laughs> Especially these down here. <laughs> So those are blending modes, and again, mostly you'll use like normal, or you might use darken, or soft light, or multiply comes into play a fair amount. For now, we're going to leave it on normal. Just wanted to introduce you to that. And then over here, you have opacity. And opacity is how much you can see through this layer. So when we have our black and white layer set at 100%, it's completely covering over the colors and making everything black and white. But if we adjust this, and you can either click this drop down and drag here, or I like to just click right here and use these little double arrows. If we drag this down to say about 50%, you can see some of the color is starting to show through. And if I go all the way down to 0%, then it effectively disables the adjustment layer and you just see the layer underneath. But this is an interesting way to add, for instance, like kind of a vintage effect. If we go up to like 75%, you see a little bit of the color coming through. It's essentially a black and white photo with a little bit of a tint to it, okay? And of course, back up to 100%, it's just black and white. And fill is very similar. When you do this, you reduce the fill of this adjustment layer and you can go from zero to 100%. We've already talked about locking a layer. You can lock any layer. I recommend keeping this one locked, but if I wanted to lock this for some reason too, I could. And it just makes it so you can't do certain adjustments or edits to it, which can save you from screwing up your image on accident. And essentially all of these little icons are various types of locks, and you won't use a lot of them too often, but uh, this one prevents it from auto-nesting into and out of artboards, 
which we haven't gone into, but an artboard is a kind of a canvas that you create and you can bring up multiple images into it and work with multiple images on that artboard at the same time. Um, this one prevents you from being able to move it so it locks the position of your image on the canvas. This one locks the pixels of your image so it won't allow you to brush it. So like for instance, if I, well, let's see, I have to unlock that one and Oh, I'd have to deal on something like this. Unlock that, lock that. And now if I go get a brush, it just won't let me do it because I've locked the pixels, which is a really good way to protect your image, okay? And then finally, let's unlock that again. And then this one will lock all of the transparent pixels. So you have your locks here, you have your fill, your opacity, and your blending modes right here. And then finally up here, you can search or you can filter by different layer types. And this toggles it on or off. And so we haven't gotten into actually layer types yet, but let's say you have an adjustment layer. You just wanna find adjustment layers. Notice we have, down here we have an image layer, which again, we haven't talked about this, but we'll get into it. We have an image layer here, and then we have an adjustment layer and an adjustment layer. Now, if we wanted to filter this list just by images, then we could just click on this little image icon and it will only show you the images. It'll also give you a little red dot here so you know that you're only seeing part of your list. If we only wanted to see our adjustment layers, we can click here and it'll show us just our adjustment layers. Oh, actually I have to toggle that one off, but then it'll show just adjustment layers. If I only wanted to see text layers, or shape layers or smart objects, then I could just click on any of these. But you'll see if I click on a text layer and I turn off adjustments, nothing in this is a text layer. So nothing's gonna show up. You can always just turn this off and all of your layers will show up. And then finally, if I wanted to sort, well, I could turn this back on, turn that off so I have all layers on. And then if I wanted to do a search, um, say I wanted to find uh, something that said black and white, then I would go B-L-A-C-K. And only the black and white layer will come up according to a name. You could also search by effect, mode, kind is this one, You're the kind of layer that it is. You can sort by colors if you've color coded these and so on. And by the way, speaking of color coding, if you want to add a color to these, you can right click and the colors are down here. So if I want to color code this red, I just put a little red icon there and then that can help you to sort things as well along with grouping, okay? I could take this one and make it green and that helps you sort. If you want to get rid of the color, just right click again, no color, right click, no color, and you're sorted. Okay, so that's kind of the more details and some tips and tricks on how to use adjustment layers. Definitely open an image, it doesn't matter if it's this one, but go in, create some new adjustment layers, try duplicating an adjustment layer, try creating adjustment layer and then dragging it into another image, lock your layers, play with the opacity, do some play with the blending modes, and just get familiar with this so that as we progress and you start to learn more and more about these things and we use it more, you'll already feel kind of familiar with it. Okay, go play. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.